Now we've been trained to use our minds in one way and that is to focus in on all of the data, the thoughts, emotions, sensations and other experiences and to describe them, to label them, to think about them, to work them out, to encourage some that we've labelled as positive or good and to try and get rid of others we've labelled as negative or bad and that's the way that we've been trained to utilise our minds and we have to work really really hard to do that because the data are continually changing. Your experience is this seamless flow, one thought effortlessly flowing into the next. And so trying to make sense of life, trying to understand who we are, how we should be behaving, what we should be doing with our time, how to relate to people based on this ever-changing flow of descriptions is really, really hard work. For me, it's like um, trying to grab onto a really wet piece of soap. You're constantly trying to grasp onto something that's already gone. <laughs> and so there's this constant sense of tension. Because we're never quite sure where we are. We're trying to base our stability and our sense of ease on something that is completely dynamic impossible to hold in place and each time you relax and just just rest naturally you see that for yourself you have this deep insight and recognition into the nature of mind you see that your mind is wide open like the sky we can look at our minds and can, can we find an edge or a limit or a boundary now where, where does your mind begin where, where does it end and simply by relaxing and just allowing the, the flow of data to be exactly as it is, we become more and more comfortable with the actual nature of our mind, with the actual nature of reality. This pristine space of complete openness, where this raw empty knowing is recognised in its dynamic energy, in its flow of potent beneficial data. So your experiences, your data, your thoughts, emotions and sensations are where you get the opportunity to recognise this beneficial potency. The only place you recognise your capacity to know is in the things that you are experiencing. They're, they're not separate, you can't take one out from the other. And so what happens as we begin to recognise this and as we become more and more familiar and certain through repeating these short moments of instinctive recognition is that there is this sense of pervasive ease. We become able to really rely on this perceptual openness rather than on all of the ever-changing descriptions. Now when I look at my experience the descriptions are just wild. You know, completely wild, incredible, bizarre, horrific, beautiful thoughts, all just in this grand display. And um, it's been amazing just to see that I can allow myself to be exactly as I am. And this went so much against everything that I had learned and everything I taught and everything I taught myself about how I needed to function in the world. That it, it was a process of adjustment. And um, certainly coming to balanced view, you know, there was so much data coming up. You know, even coming to my first open meeting was this huge event, it seemed to be this sort of monumental thing that I had to do, it was like what is an open meeting, you know that sounds really challenging, I don't know if I even want to go, I'm happy listening to talks on my own and, uh, and being amongst groups of people, you know the, the display becomes even more wild. Although I say that and when I'm at home on my own, if anybody could see the way that I behave and the, the strange things that I sing and shout and the, the, the grand display just continues on there. <laughs> and becoming more and more comfortable with this display allows us to tap into this capacity to be of great benefit. And what I see is that um, 
the way that I change the world is in these short moments of just allowing myself to be exactly as I am. We create the world, we create society. We take responsibility for deciding what kind of world we want to live in and what kind of relationships we want to have. This is a grassroots movement where each one of us empowering ourselves with this education in the nature of mind brings about a fundamental shift and change in the world where we contribute to that very directly with each short moment we take. We realign ourselves with the reality of pure benefit. And we see what that means, what it means to, to, to live a life of benefit, to live a life of, of love and care, firstly towards ourselves and then towards other people. And what I see is that whilst I'm focusing in on my data, on my descriptions about what's going on, it's just complete self-focus in all situations. So, for example, with the feelings that I've learned to label as guilt. So for me, those would be ideas about um, things that I shouldn't have done. Um, and those thoughts just spontaneously arise and occur. Oh, no, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, God, why did I, why did I do that? Or things that I haven't done. Oh, no, I really should have done that. I, you know, I've, I've let them down again. And, and it's so easy to see what happens in this example when I focus in on this particular stream of data. It's this spiral into negativity, into self-criticism, self-judgment, blaming myself for having the thoughts that I have and being the way that I am. And it's, it's kind of a paralysis because I convince myself that I'm a failure, I convince myself that I'm wrong, and I really then give up trying to, to do anything because I'm wrong and I get everything wrong and I, you know, I never live up to other people's expectations and my own expectations and it's like this broken record that just goes round and round and round and I, I used to live my life like that and it, it's just so painful to, to see that now. And, and so now we have the solution and the solution is the four mainstays and the first mainstay is a short moment of just allowing that data just to be exactly as it is and to see that it resolves naturally like a, a line drawn in water or like the flight path of a bird in the sky. It doesn't leave any trace in the pristine, open, sky-like nature of mind. All I have to do is relax and allow that self-freeing, that automatic, guaranteed self-freeing of each moment just to be as it is. And then everything opens out. The data become our... We're able to utilise the information in the data to be of benefit. So I'm empowered by the, da the data of negativity and criticism. So rather than being something that brings me down, that paralyses me, I'm able to utilise the information in there to see what I can do to help someone in a situation. Just by allowing it to open out, recognising it as inseparable, as the dynamic energy of open intelligence. This obsessive self-concern just very gently relaxes and opens out. And the short moments are so, so powerful because we test out for ourselves in our own experience what it means to just allow ourselves to be exactly as we are. But what I saw for myself was that the rest of the support was essential. There were certain data streams, certain thoughts that I was so used to emphasising, really giving this power to, that I just couldn't allow them to be as they were, even for a short moment. They were just too overwhelming. That, that negativity, that constant nagging criticism. And so by involving myself in the rest of the mainstays, by participating in written trainings, where I got to ask questions to trainers, um, to hear the experiences of other, other participants, to read texts that evoke this instinctive recognition. Then my capacity to allow myself to be exactly as I, as I am, it just strengthened in, in this really effortless way. I wasn't doing anything, I was just showing up and, and reading some texts and listening to talks at home or whenever was convenient. I didn't have to make these huge changes in my life. I didn't have to become another person, which is what I thought I had to do before I could find this capacity to be of benefit or even just to be comfortable with myself. 
<coughs> it was actually in the flow of data that I could find my power. So it was in all of the negativity, by allowing it to be exactly as it was, that I find the capacity, first of all, to have this compassion for myself, but then to be empowered to, to share everything that I wanted to share and to support the people that I wanted to support with complete open-heartedness that had been impossible before due to this obsessive self-focus, due to the emphasis on data. And um, it, it was really painful and frustrating because I, I, I wanted to show up in my life. I wanted to be there for the people in my life. It's particularly when there were challenging situations that occurred. And um, I always felt like I was, you know, I, I was letting myself down because I, there was just this heartfelt wish to, to, to be there for the people in my life. You know, I really wanted to, to be that that rock of support for the people in my life. <clears throat> and I, I just wasn't able to do it. I was so caught up with the way that I was feeling or what I was thinking or what I thought other people were thinking about me and just this focus on all of this data. And um, it's been amazing to see the difference this training has made in those circumstances. To allow myself to feel everything and from there act in a way that really is of benefit to all and has huge practical implications. I mean, for me, I love hearing about the nature of mind. I love hearing about raw, empty knowing and open intelligence and inseparability. But what this training is really about is how we're going to live our lives. How we relate to each other as human beings. And um, to have the support of a global community, to have other people who are also committed to relying on the Four Mainstays and you know, really empowering themselves as these incredible open-ended benefit generators, just recognising that's actually who we've always been, and that, that desire to help and support was that innate capacity just wanting to be expressed. And seeing that when we do this together, we, we train this up. We train our discernment and our skillfulness up. This, this raw, empty capacity and desire to be of benefit becomes honed and laser-like and skillful within the context of the Four Mainstays. So the Four Mainstays are the practical um, framework where we can actually test this out in everyday life. Because doing it on our own, it would be so easy to come up with all kinds of bizarre notions about what being of benefit meant and to, to drift off into some you know, really weird ideas. But when we're doing this together, in constant relationship and interaction with other people, being in touch with trainers whose only job is to really empower us, we can't go wrong. It's this guarantee given. And in terms of my own um, data around the training, Sometimes it still runs wild, um, but what I see in my life, the value and the benefit that I'm getting, just outshines that data of awkwardness or discomfort or um, embarrassment or wh whatever it can be about you know, what I see going on around me. The, the benefit, the shining benefit that I see in my life, the capacity to support the people in my life in ways that would have been completely imaginable for me ten years ago, that is of such value that these data streams, they can just do whatever they're doing. You know, I can see what is of real importance in my life. And, and just recognising that, just taking the time to acknowledge that, is really powerful. Because the data are wild. You know, it swings from one way to another. You know, I think about the way that I relate with people. And, and the data, it's, you know, I, I just love someone the next minute and then I can't stand them the next and then they're brilliant again and then they're really irritating and, you know, it's just all changing the whole time. And that's why it was so hard to relate based on these ever-changing descriptions. But instead when we relate from just complete perceptual openness, from open-heartedness, then there's a naturalness of relating where we don't need to try and 
work out what this ever-changing display means. We become completely stable in our recognition of open intelligence and relating from there is easy and powerful. And, and, and you can train this up. That's what happens in balanced view. We all have this innate capacity. And it's like anything. If you had a... Well, maybe, I know some of you are, you know, gifted musician. You might have an amazing natural disposition and gift, but then to train it up is where you develop and hone that natural, natural gift that you've got. You, know, you, might, you might have this incredible gift, but if you never practice or never played, it'd be a completely different thing. You, know, you have the capacity to train up your power to be of great benefit. And um, I, I still marvel and wonder at my good fortune at coming across a training that has that effect on me in my life with really clear, practical results. You know, I just, I, I still don't understand it, but I see the results. And, and I, I, I just come back and that glows brighter and brighter.